What's good, Josh? Your boy Ross back at it again with another video. So, gotta talk about the spoiler side of things when it comes to the movie Spiral. I uh, wanna give my thoughts and opinions from the things I remember from watching it at the theater. And I, like I said in my uh, spoiler free video, it was cool to be able to come back to the theater theaters again and, and watch a movie and the big screen and the surround sound so let's start with pretty much the main plot of this is chris rock's character zeke banks is a great cop he's a good cop he pretty much snitched on another cop for killing an innocent man and then trying to cover it up he got that cop locked away but in doing that all the other cops in the station looked at him as a traitor as a rat as a snitch so he was never really beloved by anybody else pretty much after that. Then there was a situation with him with some of the other detectives where Chris Rock character needed some backup. They didn't want to help him get backup. He ended up getting shot because of it. And Chris Rock's father, played by Samuel L. Jackson, Marcus Bank was, you know, the chief at the time. So, you know, he is, you know, upset with everyone else. But also at the same time, his father is one of the main people that was covering up all the dirty stuff that the cops were doing. He knew they were doing stuff. He knew they were killing people, but he never really said anything about it. So he was also upset with Chris Rock's character for snitching on another officer. So I, I, I thought that whole dynamic of all these cops are really scumbags and there's only really one good cop in the force trying to make an actual change i thought that was interesting it does kind of you know i guess you could say give some type of realism to what's going on in today's society you know not all officers are bad and i know that hell my dad is a great uh, police officer so he's you know he would definitely be the person that plays you know, Chris Rock character, he, he's not one for, you know, cops just killing people for the sake of killing people and then covering up. So I know those type of cops are out there, but it was just interesting that they went that route. I enjoyed it. And then the new chief, Marisol Nichols, I'm not sure. So if I'm mispronouncing it, he plays Captain Angie and she's one of the new chiefs. And she was also working with uh, um, Chris Rock's father in this film. And she also knew the dirty stuff that they were covering up. So it's it was literally just this jigsaw killer or copycat going after all the police. Everyone that's in a trap in this movie are police officers. And I'm gonna get to the to the the twist towards the end of this video, but I definitely want to talk about the traps. Uh, I mentioned in my spoiler free video that the traps were um they were brutal and yes they were uh the very first trap you get introduced to a guy is being i want to say he's his wrist is tied behind his back with barbed wire and he's like on this stool and his tongue is protruded out and it's on this device and it's like his tongue is like nailed between this device and basically all he has to do to get free is kick the stool from under his feet because he's uh, right above these like train tracks like he's hanging right above the train like a little subway train area all he has to do is kick the stool from under his feet the weight will rip out his tongue as he falls down but he only has like maybe a few minutes to do this if not the train that's hitting him <laughs> that well, there's a train that's coming his way at fast speed that's going to hit him and obviously by the time the conductor sees someone hanging up in the middle of the trackway, they can't stop. It takes hundreds and hundreds of feet for them to stop fully. They would have to see that miles down the road. Obviously, he does not make it. It was a very intense scene. He ends up getting obliterated, body splatters. And it's funny, he finally jumps down. I, I, the timing of it. He jumps down, rips his tongue, about, tongue out, but it doesn't matter because the train's already there. Like, you might as well just brace for impact, bro. But, yeah, once that was the, the setup trap. You know, all these soft movies have a setup trap. And that was the setup trap to start off the whole movie. And I was like, okay, this was a good trap. Very violent, very bloody. And, uh, you know what I'm saying? I'm, 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 I'm all for it. I know that sounds sick, but I'm all for it. Um, I want to say the next trap 
after that finger trap uh one of the officers one of the detectives he's like in this type of tub situation and there's water and then there's like this copper wires electrified wire that's just sitting right above the water and there's this contraption that's wrapped around each of one of his fingers like this barbed wire mesh that's wrapped around each one of his fingers tightly and basically what he has to do is there's like this little face plate on and when he bites down on the face plate gives him the option to bite down on it the chains that are connected to the end of his fingers wrapped around the, the wires the little gloves on his fingers he has to get to this point this leverage point where his body can't go any further and one by one his fingers will get pulled off he has to do that before the, the water fills up in this tub area and it reaches the live wire or he'll get electrocuted and that that was a very very brutal scene not even gonna lie to you shout out to my mans though he he tried you know what i'm saying he, he definitely gave it a a shot you, you know his fingers was just constantly ripping off it was brutal but it didn't matter because by the time it uh he was getting to the last fingers uh he was getting electrocuted and fried so he ended up dying angie is involving her and like i said all these cops are dirty so this person knows that they're dirty and it's crazy how this happened this happened within the, the police department in like the evidence room or whatnot she ends up getting trapped in there uh end up getting gas and basically she she's like on this waterboard contraption she has like this little like i guess you could say like a plastic type bag or sheet over her face so i'm thinking She's about to be waterboarded, but with like steaming hot water. You know what I'm saying? That's still brutal. But no, no, it wasn't water that was coming out of the pipe. It's actual hot wax falling onto her face. And basically what she has to do, she's laying down, strapped down on this little table situation. There's this blade. There's this blade right under her neck. And she basically has to cut her spinal cord in order for the hot wax to stop flowing i want you to understand she was screwed in this trap bro she has to sever she has to actively make sure she paralyzes herself for the rest of her life or get hot wax poured on you until you die and like i said these traps are like damn near impossible to pass you can technically pass it but after if you were to manage to pass these tests or these um these um these games you would be forever permanently scarred in ways where i don't even think you would like really appreciate life you know these traps weren't made for victims to win these traps were made for them to suffer and die and this was oh it was brutal the hot wax falling on her face she's and she can't really just you know make the the movement of her severing her spinal cord quick she's laying on it so she has to move back and forth on her neck oh my god that was that was a cringe a very cringe worthy scene chris rock ends up figuring it out he goes down there to try to save her um and ultimately he gets there too late he peels off the wax and her face is all burnt up it's, it was brutal bro not gonna lie to you so she ends up dying then we get to an interesting trap so uh chris rocks get captured and you see the his he's handcuffed but you see like this this like i want to say like uh if you guys remember the first movie where dr gordon cut off his foot it's the same saw he tries to cut the handcuffs from this pipe he doesn't then it looks like he's about to cut his hand but obviously my man's not about to do that he sees his bobby pin on the ground he grabs it with the saw and he's able to pick the lock and he's good there's a person chained up the person that's chained up is the detective that chris rock's character um told on for killing someone innocent he was a dirty cop he got sent to jail he got out of jail or whatever and basically he's chained up and he's like sitting on his box or whatnot and you're figuring you're trying to figure out what the what the trap is because basically chris rock has the opportunity to either save him 
or let him die. If you guys remember Saw 3, I think his name was Jeff. Uh, the guy that was super slow and didn't really save nobody in that movie. All of those people died brutally. It wasn't because he was trying to help them. He, he was just sitting there. That's basically Chris Rock's situation. He can either save this guy or let this guy die. And bruh, it this one was it was it was I wouldn't say it was like different in the sense of pretty ingenious. There's these it's like they're in this factory warehouse area and there's a whole bunch of glass bottles falling into this this compactor that's chewing up the glass. But as it chews up the glass, it's spitting the glass out at high speeds and the dude is chained up and his back is against it. So all you see is hot glass just coming at high speeds not gonna lie to you that was a brutal trap too i don't know if you guys have ever cut your foot on glass cut your finger on glass that hurts so imagine your back being shot with shards of glass and you can just see the flesh off his back just paw falling off it was brutal bro not gonna lie ultimately chris figures out the riddle to figure out where the key is but it's too late he ends up dying. He tries to save him. He even takes some a few glass shards himself to try to save the guy. But ultimately, he was not able to. And that guy dies. So, we're finally getting to the epic twist, right? We're getting to the epic twist. Detective William is Chris Rock's new partner or whatnot. You get introduced to him in the beginning of the movie. You find out that he is behind it all. He fakes his own death. You find out why he's doing this. That person, that um, that innocent person that got killed by the detective had a son. So when Chris Rock came up there and was trying to figure out what was going on while there was a person dead, he looks in there and he sees the son. The son was watched. He watched the whole thing happen. He sees the son. He tells the son, you know the child to don't say nothing be quiet you know what i'm saying obviously you know i'm sure that cop would probably shoot that damn kid but kid grows up finds his way into that very same department and that's how he ends up going on this cop killing murdering spree because he wants to go after every dirty cop that's his mission because he's he basically wants to recruit uh Chris Rock's character. He wants to, you know, he wants to work with one. He wants to know who are the dirty cops. If they're if they're a dirty cop, just send them to me. Send them to me. Let me know. I'll take care of the rest. You don't have to do nothing. That's what he wants to do. He wants to fix the system from within. That's his goal or whatnot. It's an admirable goal. It's just a really messed up way to go about it. But that's how that's the mega twist. And you kind of can tell something is up because Throughout the movie, Chris Rock's character gets packages sent to the to the station. He gets packages sent to the station and you can, you know, each package is detailing who's, you know, who was the next victim. And one of the packages comes in as his partner, as his partner, you know, like, you know, like one of his partner's body parts. But it really wasn't. It was just a, a kind of like a, a fake out. You know what I'm saying? He thought his partner got killed by Jigsaw. But here's the thing. You never see him get killed on camera. Every other person that got killed in this movie, you see them get captured and then you see them ultimately die from the trap. You never see him actually die. They just, it's implied that he ended up getting skinned alive, but it doesn't make sense for the spiral jigsaw killer to just skin someone alive. It have to, you know what I'm saying? That's not Jigsaw's MO. They usually kill themselves, whatever technicality he wants to go on. So that's when I knew he's not dead. And he's probably the Jigsaw killer, the new Jigsaw killer, because they never showed his death. And that, to me, is bad storytelling in the sense of if they would have did some type of way to write him off where it's believable, okay. But they wrote him off and it's like, um we didn't even see him die and you know what I'm saying he's an important character in this film if an important character is gonna die you're gonna see it you know what I'm saying twist kind of obvious but 
you know, it, it is what it is. You 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 get his motives or whatever. So, you know, Chris Rock's like, all right, man, well, like, what's going on here? I, I'll work with you. He's like, all right, that's cool. You'll work with me, but you got one more test. You failed your other test by trying to save that guy that killed my dad. So now I'm going to I'm gonna see if you're going to pass this test. And this test involves none other than Chris Rock's dad, Samuel L. Jack. He is pretty much stringed up by these ivs that's pretty much pouring like draining his blood into these vials like these glass vials or whatnot william does detective williams does he's not a detective anymore what he does is he calls the cops shoot off some gun rounds or whatnot and then you know he knows that the protocol they're gonna send the swat team over here so that's exactly what they do or whatnot so they don't they don't have much time so samuel jack's characters strung up like a, a puppet i guess you could say and chris rock has the option to either kill william and they all screwed or or he can shoot this little target up above that will release sam jack or whatnot and they'll be good or whatever but he reveals that sam jack has been behind all the dirty cops killing people and he's been covering up for years you know and he it was one of those revelations that kind of you know you know was heartbreaking for chris rock's character but at the end of the day it's still his dad so he ends up shooting the target little spiral target above he falls down or whatever but it's really still the trap is still going as he does that uh, he ends up fighting with William in the elevator, start beating his ass or whatever, start fighting with him in a, like this elevator shaft. He used the last of the bullets uh, to shoot the, the spiral target and the SWAT team is coming in and his dad knows something's up because it's like there's just wire. And once it's open, once that door is open that the SWAT team's trying to go up, trying to get into it the trap will ultimately be activated so obviously they get inside chris uh you know what i'm saying uh beating up old dude he stops beating up on dude you know he, he has his hands above his head or whatnot and as they open in the door sam jack's body's being lifted up like a puppet jigsaw new mascot in this movie is like this weird pig puppet or whatnot like a little marionette puppet that's basically his new mascot in this film and that's kind of how he was being portrayed sam jack he had these strings above him that's hooked up into his body and one of the things is pulling up a shotgun and of course the swat team don't know anything about it they just see this guy dangling and all they see is his hand pulling up a shotgun Granted, he's not pulling it up. It's the me mechanism that is. So he's trying to tell, you know, Chris Rock trying to tell them no. And they open up fire or whatnot because they don't know any better. They open up fire and they end up killing Sam Jack's, uh, Sam Jack's uh, character. Uh, they kill him off. They riddle him with bullets. He's dead. The other dude, <laughs> um, the other dude, William, gets away in the elevator shaft. I don't know why no one didn't even... Go. I mean, I get it. They were all their focus was on, on Sam Jack being a puppet. But no one looked to their right. All they had to do was look to their right. Those elevators, one of them large like elevators that you put like like sofas and you move furniture in. They're heavy. They're large and loud. All they had to do was look, and they could have seen the guy descending down because those elevators are loud. But no one looked. They didn't see, so he he ends up just descending down, and uh, no one ends up stopping him, and that's how the movie ends, with Chris Rock, his father being killed, and, you know, all these other officers being murdered, so I'm not sure if there is going to be a sequel, but like I said, I enjoyed it for what it was, and if you're a fan of the Saw movies, I think you guys will probably enjoy this as well. So comment down below, let me know, what was your favorite trap? from this film and by favorite i mean brutal like one of those traps that just made you super squeam squeamish made you cringe made you look away what trap made you feel like that in this film comment down below let me know i appreciate all the love and support road to 40k appreciate y'all kicking it with me and i'll see y'all on the next one peace